So you're thinking about starting a capsule wardrobe, but you're not a minimalist and you don't have a minimal style. Well, let me help you. When I first started my capsule wardrobe, I was really inspired by this minimal Scandi style. But as I got further and further into building my wardrobe, I realized that wasn't the only element of my style and there are other things that I like but I could include them and it actually worked fine. So I've decided to put together a guide based off of my own experience of how I would build a capsule wardrobe if I was starting from scratch. And if you're new around here, hi, my name is Lucy Moon. I talk about capsule wardrobes, style, some skincare, some beauty, some living in London stuff. If you would like to stick around, please do hit subscribe, like the video if you are enjoying it, and you can also hit the join button now too. So for me personally, I know a lot of people say when you're building a capsule wardrobe, you can do a whole bunch of different tasks and exercises. There are all sorts of tools on the internet to help you. I don't necessarily think you need all of that, I just think you need your intuition. But I think there's one or two things you can do to start with just to give you a broader, bigger picture sense of what your wardrobe currently looks like and what you actually gravitate towards. So I'd start by opening your wardrobe, taking a big look. As you're looking, pull out your favourite items. Now this means items that you wear a lot, you always gravitate towards, and also the ones that make you feel the most comfortable. So we're talking the ones that meet that lovely Venn diagram middle of you really love the way they look and you love the way they make you feel. Now do the same with your coats, your shoes and your bags. Put all these items together and give them a proper look and think, what is it about these items? Is there any continuity there? Like what draws me to them? Why, why? Are there any themes that are standing out to you? Are there any distinct colors? Are there any distinct styles? Is there anything that you notice trend-wise? Make a note of any trends that you notice in this collection of clothes. I would use these clothes as a beacon to guide your future purchases. And just in general, the way you approach building your capsule wardrobe. So the way that I see a capsule wardrobe functioning is at its core, there are some basics. There are some core things that rarely change out season to season. And then there's a kind of rotation on the outer side. So I would say that rotation mainly splits in two, one section being autumn, winter, and one section being spring and summer. So for half of the year, probably if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, half of these clothes will be in storage. Mine live under my bed. So yeah, there's a very weather specific rotation I think that happens. I reckon this format could also be adjusted for rainy season and dry season, but your core collection would probably be larger and your rotation would be smaller. So the capsule wardrobe that I'm gonna help you build today is autumn and winter. If you are living in a different place or it's summer where you are, I'm sorry. Hopefully I'll make a summer capsule wardrobe video later in the year. So I've been trying to break down the formula to how I make my capsule wardrobe function. And I think honestly, it boils down to different types of occasion. I think you have to have items that feel casual, work, smart, party, holiday, and occasion. Your work category will normally fall somewhere between one of the other five, depending entirely on your work. And also some of us are working from home at the moment, so that might not even apply to you at all. But I realized that when my capsule wardrobe struggled to function was when I only had casual clothes or when I only had smart clothes. I need a variety of pieces that can be fit into different formulas and create a wide variety of outfits. And I think by gut instinct, you look at a piece and you kind of know which category it fits into. So for example, I might have a t-shirt that I'm like, well, you're pretty casual, but I can always pair it with a pair of my smarter trousers and then some trainers. And then I've made another casual outfit, but it feels more put together. So maybe you could wear it for a smarter occasion. Maybe to a work event or a meeting, you now have an adaptable wardrobe that can meet the needs of your fluctuating life circumstances. Another example is during the pandemic, I realized I didn't have enough casual clothes. I had clothes that were designed for going outdoors, for meeting people, for doing evening events, but I really didn't have that much for just sitting around the house. I lived in jeans, but what I really needed was more comfy trousers. So I think the way to avoid this conundrum is to make sure you have an even keel number of these items that you can pair with more casual items or more dressy items to make the outfit that is right and adaptable for whatever situation you're gonna be in. And I think for most people, and definitely most men, a lot of those situations do just fall in the casual category. So you're probably gonna have more casual clothes than anything else. But I think it's great to be able to adapt those casual clothes, dress them up, dress them down, make sure that you're comfortable and you have an outfit that's ready to go in any situation. That is ultimately what stops you going out and buying unnecessary clothes. It's also worth saying that all of these categories are relative. You might be sitting there thinking, well, I never have to dress smart. Or you might be thinking, well, I always have to dress smart. Maybe it's for work, maybe you're a lawyer, or maybe you never dress smart because you just can't think of any environments where you would. But your smart might be seeing your significant other's parents or going to church or another scenario that 
doesn't necessarily reflect what everyone else sees as a smart occasion. So your smart clothes will function for that particular circumstance. And that's totally fine. Everyone's wardrobe is different, everyone's life is different, and we can adapt it. So with these different occasions or environments, I think of those as being specific to individual items. And you'll probably follow your gut on that. You'll probably look at your sequin skirt and go, probably a party item or like probably a fun item. So moving on, these are the types of clothes that I think every wardrobe should have. I've gone for an absolute minimal number here. Obviously have a wardrobe that fits how many clothes you are actively wearing, how much you like fashion, how much you want to experiment and play with your clothes. Everything is adaptable here. I've just gone for a very, very minimal number. And I personally believe that it's not good to feel antsy as soon as your washing basket starts to look full. I'm not gonna go into the ethics and philosophy <laughs> behind capsule wardrobes and sustainability, but I will say for me, I'd much rather you were getting long life wear out of your clothes than you were refusing to buy new ones or only buying secondhand. But that's up to you to decide. That is your decision to make. And obviously adapt these to your circumstance. If you are never in smart events, then you're probably only gonna want one pair of smart bottoms. But hopefully this formula can be adapted to everyone. I would start with six basic tops. Basics look different for everyone. I don't mean just white, black, and gray. For me, basics look like a plain white t-shirt, a vest, and some polar necks. But for you, it might be a bold color shirt. Whatever your version of basics are, it should embody the core of your style and be able to mix and match with a lot of your wardrobe. It's kind of the most simplified, pared down version of your style. And oftentimes, especially in winter, a lot of these items will be seen as building blocks. So they'll be often covered by jumpers and other layers. And then I think you should have four fun tops. Stuff you're excited to wear, stuff that warms your heart when you look at it in your wardrobe. And a lot of the time these can be dressed up or down, maybe just worn with jeans on a weekend, or maybe paired with some heels on an evening. It's worth saying as well, I've structured this guide to be quite specific to women's wear, but hopefully if you wear more androgynous clothes or men's wear, you'll be able to adapt this to your style as well. Two nice tops. So for this, I mean stuff that feels a bit more luxurious, stuff you're excited to put on, but can definitely be dressed up for maybe an evening event. One loungewear set. Now you might be thinking what on earth? but I genuinely think whether it's a cute set of in the house pajamas that make you feel cute, or whether it's a proper like sweat set or maybe athleisure, I think it's really, really important to have one comfy set that you can wear that is for getting dressed, but you're staying in the house, or maybe you're just walking the dog. You're just wandering about, pottering around, a nice reset Sunday outfit. But I think something about the coordination element of it just makes it feel way more put together and kind of like an outfit. Now to jumpers. I think you should have at least two smart sweaters. This could mean anything to you. This could mean they're just maybe more tailored, or it could mean for me, like it's knitwear, like this counts as a smart sweater, this Suzanne knit. For me, it's something that can be paired with jewelry and a nice trouser. And then I think you should have two more casual sweaters. For me, this is sweatshirts and hoodies. Obviously, I would expand this group if <laughs> four jumpers are not enough for you because it's definitely not enough for me. But I just wanted to make the distinction between more smart, knitwear or uh, jumpers and then more casual ones. I think it's good to have a bit of both. I would have at least one pair of jeans. I've just written one pair here because I know some people do not like them, but jeans are so versatile and you can nearly always find a jean that works for you, whether it's stretchy, whether it's cropped, whether it pinches your waist a little bit, you know, you can always find one that works for you. I feel like most people probably have like three pairs of jeans, but yeah, completely up to you. I then have two casual bottoms. These are pairs that are comfy. These are ones that you're comfortable working from home in. Speaking of which, I'm actually wearing some today. I don't know if you can see, but I've got my nice stretchy and other stories ones on. I've called these bottoms specifically because for you, this might be shorts, might be trousers, might be jeans, or it might be a skirt. I know some people don't even like trousers and they just wear skirts. That's also totally fine. I'd have one pair of smart bottoms, something you could wear with a shirt. And then I'd have two pairs of fun bottoms, something you wanna wear at the weekend, something you wanna wear to parties, something that could be really fun with a little white t-shirt, or could go even harder, you could do something even more fun. Maybe something with an interesting pattern or texture. Again, it's something you will be excited to wear, especially on a weekend or to a party. The next one's applicable more to women's wear, but it's two full length items. So whether that's dresses or jumpsuits, whatever floats your boat, something you can put on and then just add a shoe and a bag and a coat and it feels like a full outfit. This again will cater more to whatever your general style is and your general occasions you end up going to. For me, that works out as casual dresses that can be dressed a bit smarter as well for a work event. And then one occasion wear full length. So for this, I mean probably a suit if you're into menswear 
or maybe a long like formal uh, or like wedding-y dress if you're a woman. By wedding-y, I mean like wedding guest, not getting married yourself. But something you can whip out for a proper event, for example, a fancy Christmas do or a winter wedding. And if you have a lot of those kind of events happening, I'd really recommend checking out rental sites. I would highly recommend rental sites. They have so many options. It's much more affordable and better for the planet, I believe, than going and buying a whole new outfit. Okay, let's move on to jackets. Now this one is very subjective depending on where you live. I'm in the UK, so for me, jackets are very important. I grew up in a family where we just like wore one jacket for everything and you got a new jacket every winter. That is not <laughs> a functional way of wearing jackets, I've found. I think if you want to be able to build outfits, you kind of need a few different types of jacket depending on the weather. So this makes sense for me, but obviously adapt it to what works best for you. One, rain jacket. I think this is the one that is definitely like variable for me, but something you can fold up really small, put in a suitcase, travel with, but protect you from the elements. One, fleece. I didn't see the value in fleeces until I got one and I wear mine all the time. It's a perfect casual jacket. It's great for weekends, great for going on a walk, a great casual thing to have. One nice jacket. So one for wearing to a party or an event. I tend to have a blazer, but for you it could be a bomber jacket, it could be an aviator, it could be a leather jacket, just something nice. Another optional one is a fun jacket. So something that feels a bit party. It sounds silly, but for so long I didn't have one in my wardrobe and I really felt a gap. Maybe that's just because of my lifestyle, but now I've got this faux fur, ridiculous leopard print green one and I love it. A leather jacket would also be great. Obviously not for everyone but for me the party jacket has to go with an all black outfit. One warm coat. I feel like for women's wear this often looks like a very long line wool coat and it should be an everyday coat that looks good with the majority of your wardrobe. One super warm coat. For me this is my puffer jacket. My life has changed irrevocably since I got this especially when it gets to the depths of cold chilly winter. This has been a lifesaver. It's for when you still want to look good but the elements aren't on your side. Shoes. Let's move on to shoes. So I would have two pairs of casual comfy shoes. For most people this might be a trainer, but it could also be a Birkenstock, could be a mule, something that is broken in, really really comfy, and something you can alternate with the other pair of casual shoes. It's something I'm still trying to learn myself, but when you alternate your shoes you don't wear them out as fast and it's really much 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 better for your wardrobe. I'd have one pair of boots, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I'd have one nice or smarter shoe, or one you can dress up and down, like a loafer, a mule, a smarter shoe that doesn't tear your feet up. For some people this might be a desert boot, or even could be a heeled boot. And then I would have one pair of dressy shoes. Now, let me come with some caveats. For women, this often means heels, but if you don't wear heels, don't get heels. This pair of shoes has to be something you could spend the whole evening wearing, and it has to go with a fair bit of your smart and evening wardrobe. My friend Emma, who I recently did a Nothing to Wear episode with, has an amazing pair of by far heels. They're transparent and they've got these silver gems on them. They go with her entire wardrobe. She could wear them with an all black outfit and they'd look amazing. She could wear them with the most colorful outfit she owns and they'd also look amazing. They look good in summer, they look good in winter. Be more like Emma. If you're not a heels person, maybe look to some smart loafers or some smart brogues, or maybe even look at ballet flats. And then I would have one pair of whatever shoes. I'm talking ones that you can do a muddy walk in. <laughs> it sounds silly, but how often have I ruined a pair of shoes from wearing them when it's pissing it down outside? Too many times. Don't make my mistake. I would keep this as an old pair of trainers or a welly. And on to bags. One carry all bag. So by that I mean a backpack or a tote, something you can pile groceries into or put your laptop in, something that will carry everything you need. But I want you to actually like wearing it. This is practical, but also looks good. One classic everyday bag goes with the majority of your wardrobe and you can fit all your essentials in it. And then I'd have one fun bag like one you can take to little parties. This again is something I don't have and I really, really feel the void, especially around Christmas party season. However, don't stress about this one. You could always rent a bag if you've got a particular occasion coming up. And finally, let's talk accessories. So this one's a bit more vague, but having the right kind of underwear is vital. I've spoken about this before. I'm not putting a number on this. This you will work out over time as you build your capsule wardrobe but you need to make sure you've got the right socks for the right shoes and the right pants, ones that don't have VPL on the outfits that you might worry about VPL. You might want some underwear that goes with the tone of your skin so it's not visible under sheer items. If you're a tights person, get some tights that go with your wardrobe. One belt. I would have a very versatile belt. It could even be a scarf, just something that you can thread through your belt loops, either to add something nice visually to your outfit or for more practical reasons like holding your trousers up. One pair of sunglasses. 
I didn't have this for the longest time, but even in winter, there is sun. Maybe not so much in England, but there really is sometimes a sunny day. Cold weather accessories. I'm not putting a number on this, but I feel if you lean more towards menswear, it's probably gonna be some hats, maybe a cap, maybe a woolly hat, and then, or a beanie, that's probably what I mean, not a woolly hat. And if you wear more women's wear, maybe gloves, scarf, or maybe all of these, no matter what. But just make sure you've got them for when it gets very chilly. And finally, let's talk about jewelry. I love having a basic wardrobe of jewelry, just a few pieces that I wear day in, day out. They make me feel like my outfit is complete. I just feel like jewelry finishes an outfit and makes it look more put together. Watches are also great. So I'd have a little think about what kind of jewelry works for you, what works with your outfits, what works with your lifestyle, and just what you like. So those are all the items I would put in my capsule wardrobe. In terms of where to begin building, I would start with working out your basics and build out from there. I think it's also really helpful to focus on coats, shoes, and bags. They often go neglected and forgotten in terms of building a wardrobe and building outfits, but they can be invaluable. And also having the right ones of those items for the right season, the right functions for your life, it makes such a difference. Even when you don't like the majority of your wardrobe, if you've got a coat you love, you put on the shoes that you really like, and you have a bag that you really like, and you step out of the house, you feel like yourself. And it's worth saying, some of these items will be easier to source than others. Some of them lend themselves more to slow purchasing, to secondhand buying, to just taking a moment, looking around, finding the perfect one. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of the video. Leave all of your capsule wardrobe tips in the comments, I'd love to read them. And I really hope this video has been helpful if you're trying to build your perfect capsule wardrobe. And I hope it's shown as well that you don't have to be a minimal style king or queen in order to do this. It can really work for everyone. I'll leave some capsule wardrobe building resources and some other fun videos below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more lovely videos from me and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps me in the algorithm. I will see you in my next video.